Hi, I'm Max Kaiser. This is the Kaiser Report. Oh, we're hunting. Hunting we shall go. Tally ho. Stacy Herbert, tell us more. Max, I'm hunting for Muppets. I'm joining Lloyd Blankfein's hunt. Goldman CEO Lloyd Blankfein reportedly hunting for Muppets. So CEO Lloyd Blankfein told partners in a conference call this week that he's scanning internal emails for the term Muppet and other evidence that employees refer to clients in a derogatory way. Yeah, okay, so he's uh, going through everybody's email, looking for Muppets, he's uh, in their bedroom, he's in the bathroom, he's examining uh, everyone, looking for the word Muppet. How about looking in the mirror, Lloyd Blankfein? That's the biggest Muppet of them all. You, you're the Muppet, the joke's on you. Well, two things. First of all, he's buddies with the NSA, I'm sure. He could just call them and say, yeah, send me all the Muppet references from my firm. And number two, just look at the headlines around the world, because that's what we're going to do. And you can see Muppets everywhere you look. First headline, the rich versus the seething masses. Max, you could call this the rich versus the seething Muppets. In a remarkable column in Italy's paper of record earlier this week, the columnist Ernesto Galli della Loggia flayed his country's ruling class. The country is witnessing, he believes, quote, a kind of incontinence and exhibitionism without restraint, a compulsive acquisitiveness rife within the highest circles of Italian society, this, mind you, after the departure of the highly acquisitive former Premier Silvio Berlusconi, only to be replaced by Mario Monti Max, a former Goldman Sachs international advisor. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what is the, the use of incontinence there? I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, there's a run of Depends at the uh, Italian uh, Grosseria. What's going on there? Uh, they're incontinent in what way? They're, 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 they're not paying their bills? They're incontinent? They're having incontinence problem. Double incontinence, triple incontinence. That was uh, certainly a Berlusconi specialty. Mm, well, I don't know. If you think about it, Lloyd Blankfein and all his Muppet masters, didn't they um, have a problem with incontinence in, in terms of spewing bleepy deals onto their clients over and over. They couldn't stop spewing. Yeah, maybe that's uh, the policy that should go forward from the White House is to just hand out diapers and uh, depends to these people and then they can cure their incontinence. Well, the Reuters piece notes that the stagnation of middle and working class incomes in many parts of the Western world is often turning into real decreases in spending power. Insofar as that goes on and a fragile improvement in Europe and North America may take hold and once again raise all boats, or it may not, then privileges, treats, and shows of wealth become more and more galling, even to moderates, not previously given to envy or militancy. So they're noting all of the uprisings happening around the world and the increasingly, apparently in uh, Italy, lots of uh, uh, absurd and gross displays of wealth. Right, right. And the theory that they're have in place there is this rising tide theory. The rising tide lifts all boats and that by pampering a certain section of the economy, the folks that are that are paying for the re-elections of the kleptocrats, that this is going to raise all the boats. There's that trickle-down mentality again. They, it hasn't worked yet in 40 years, but it's going to work someday, and we're going to keep beating this horse to death, even though the population's in the street. And sooner or later, one of us is going to get taken out in a most, you know, unseemly manner. By the Muppet Hunters. By the Muppet Hunters. <laughs> well, I mean, they note also in the article that a lot of the largesse, the, the most um, extravagant wealth, seems to coincide with having very close connections with whoever's in power. In in Italy itself. Of course, it is a Goldman Sachs former advisor who heads the government, unelected head of government in the ECB. It's headed by former Goldman Sachs guy Mario Draghi. So then they point to China where they say protests in China are building and they shake the leadership. In a press conference broadcast live on Chinese state television earlier this month, the retiring Wen Jubao warned that the growing wealth gap, corruption, and increasing hatred of the state could jeopardize the economic gains. Most startlingly, he warned that mistakes like the Cultural Revolution may happen again. Any government official or party member with a sense of responsibility should recognize this. Well, we, we see the Cultural Revolution happening all over, all over the uh, world, e even in America, that case in Florida where some patrol guy on neighborhood patrol shot a kid to death because he was paranoid 
that the kid might in some way be doing something that went against the zeitgeist of Florida, which is his ultra right wing Jeb Bush led nonsense. But he killed a kid, no investigation. That's the cultural revolution. They got the citizens to kill each other and then just let them do it. You know, this is the way to get, get rid of the, you have to pay him benefits anymore, do you? That, that's one less benefit to pay that kid, he's dead. Well, let's go back to these stories here because you have China, this rising wealth and income gap, you know, uh, Hank Paulson led Goldman Sachs into China. In Italy, you have not only uh, the head of government being from Goldman Sachs, but you have municipalities across Italy bankrupt, as we covered before, because of J.P. Morgan selling them interest rate swaps that have now exploded and devastated cities and municipalities. Now, let's look at what interest rate swaps are doing, not just to municipalities and the you know, the treasurers and the people in charge of who are supposed to be sophisticated of running these towns and treasuries. RBS sold complex swap to 19 year old first time landlord. So amateur property investors are caught up in the growing controversy over the sale of complex interest rate swaps to small firms that has emerged. They use the example of one budding investor, Jessica Naraji, now 23 from Bolton. She ended up with an amortizing base rate collar swap even though she did not take out the loan it was meant to protect. So she was forced by RBS, Royal Bank of Scotland, now owned by the government, to take out an interest rate swap. She took it out, but then they rejected her for the loan. So for the last few years, she's been paying this interest rate swap between the time of her being 19 and 23, to the point where it just keeps on getting worse and worse for her, the payments, and she's now 36,000 pounds in debt because they keep taking this money from her account. But they basically cold called her and they forced her to buy this product. Well, she was conscripted. You know, she was forced to serve in the army of uh, illegitimate banking products. The amortization of a dollar collar swap. This is just uh, basically a way to get a young person. Instead of sending them to the front line in Afghanistan or Iraq, you put them in one of these products. Uh, they're now conscripted. They're in this uh, bind where they're giving their life essentially for the glory of the banksters, a cultural revolution. Yeah. The, the banksters are glorious. Let us, let us revel in the glory of the banksters. You too can give away your life, uh, get sucked into, and they, they sell these uh, products under the same kind of uh, pretense, you know, buy product. We're gonna fight Al Qaeda, buy an amortizing dollar collar swap. You know, it's total nonsense. It, it's, it's immoral, it's illegal. Uh, this poor person is now going to be facing a lifetime of uh, onerous debts, uh, but it's all for the glory of the, the glorious banksters as part of the cultural revolution. Well, I'll tell you what it reminded me of is remember that banker in Australia that kidnapped a teenage girl in Australia, tied a collar, an exploding collar, a real genuine one around her neck and held her hostage and, ha and sent a ransom note to her parents. This is the equivalent of that, Max. It's a collar swap. It's just as much a terrorist act against this young girl. And yet they get away with it because it falls under financial services and GDP booster. Yeah, well, that's it. They, they put financial services on somehow this is part of the crusade to stamp out the bad guys it means that there's an inquisition going on and that if you're a young person and don't read the fine print of the bond, you have to give your life to fight the, the bad guys. And then another headline along this of, of young people being um, trapped by banking terrorists, student borrowers lack understanding of loan terms. Almost two thirds of US students, loan borrowers, misunderstood or were surprised by aspects of their loans or their student loan process, a study shows. The respondents had an average of $76,000 in student debts. Now remember, put this into context of a banking sector that is looking for Muppets. That's right. Well, they go younger and younger because uh, the, the senior citizens are blown out because of the lack of return in the retirement account because interest rates are near 0%. Then you've got the students. They've been destroyed because of the onerous student debts. A trillion in the U.S., for example, they're all their lives are destroyed. Now you've got the high school students now basically are going to be wiped out because all the municipality has functions and in the municipality, the roads and the basic services are destroyed by these banks. And, you know, the kids will be wiped out until you get to indentured servitude, where you're born into debt, you're debt slaves. You're born into debt, you die into debt. This is how it's creeping, sir, uh, crawling indentured servitude going down the generational gap all the way down until you get to the 
to the, to the birth stage. Well, many in the population will have no sympathy for the students. Their argument is that they should have known better. These people are the ones who took out the loans. I didn't. I was sensible. I did this. I did that. But the way capitalism used to work, Max, was that the banker lent to a person, but they each took a risk, right? The banker is the one who had the most risk. They had to know for sure that the person could pay back. In the US, in the student loan market, students could never escape those debts. If they live to 105, those debts will be with them no matter what. They'll have to pay those banks back. Um, now, this is relevant to this quote here where Haley Whitsett, the study's author and a senior analyst in Philadelphia at NERA Economic Consulting, said, there are many indebted graduates whose assumptions about how they would deal with their loans after college proved inaccurate. So there you have a situation where the loan provider didn't even have to consider the assumptions of whether this person could ever pay it back. No, no, not at all. The, the, the lender doesn't keep those loan on their books, they're not, if in fact there's any trouble at all, they can always blackmail the government for a bailout as they do. Uh, so the, the person taking on the debt is, uh, again, they're, they're being sent to the front line in a financial war that the, the, instead of trench warfare, this is banking tranche warfare, and they, they die in those, in those tranches uh, but they're, they're considered glorious. They, they died for the glory of Citibank. Well, speaking of glory, now here's a uh, front page of The Atlantic, and it's the hero. Ben Bernanke saved the global economy, so why does everyone hate him? Now, talk about Muppets. They're presuming that we are all Muppets, and they're saying the left hates him, the right hates him even more, but Ben Bernanke saved the economy and has navigated masterfully through the most trying of times. Well, he, he simply expanded the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve Bank by trillions and trillions of dollars. As, a, as an attempt to fake it till you make it. Uh, the idea being that, well, we'll just park trillions of dollars of debt on the balance sheet, and then through growth that'll come in the future, this debt will never have to be paid. But of course, for that growth to materialize, you'd have to get rid of the interest costs on the debt, which is not gonna happen. So there will be no growth coming down the road, but there is austerity and real austerity. So the people in the U.S. who are suffering because of Bernanke, they're not given any voice whatsoever. They're just considered to be off the radar, and we don't talk about them. They're the unwashed. They're the untouchables. They're the underclass. America now has a permanent underclass. I think that's what needs to be said, is that Ben Bernanke is a hero, unless you consider the millions and millions of people he has thrown under the bus, and then maybe he's not so heroic. All right, Stacey Herbert, thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. Don't be a Muppet. <laughs> Ooh, dangerous. All right, well, stay right there. Much more coming your way. <laughs>